Tonight we will go through this, some seven of these points, and then uh, the story will speak for itself. I'll tell you nothing but the whole truth, obviously. And then let's go to the first one. The first one is basically saying that Willie Soon is so corrupted that I have actually received this $1.2 million. So on a very fine, sunny, but cold morning of February 22nd, 2015, you can see that New York Times, there's no war is apparently peaceful. There's no major news to report, except for some problem with the bad treatment of prisoners in the Riker Islands. Of course, I've been practicing my uh, Elvis Presley jailhouse rock. And uh, you can see that they've been telling this story about this evil Willis Soon. Here's a page. Immediately, you will notice that there's something wrong here. Apparently, New York Times is not happy to call me as Willis Soon. They insist on trying to paint me in some kind of, uh, you know, foreign uh, throw or, or some kind of Asian guy that is not even a decent scientist in some sense. And then, of course, you have this kind of secondary effects. Once this thing was posted on New York Times, immediately you can see that there are this kind of a really, really appalling kind of a accusation that I'm taking bribes from, uh, from the oil companies. This is a very, very strange uh, situation, by the way. So even Reverend L. Shopton apparently have an opinion on this. So please, hear this out. When it comes to denying the human impact of global warming, Republicans have it down to a science. If climate change is a problem, and do you believe it is or not? Do you believe I, I'm not a scientist. I don't know the science behind climate change. Well, listen, I'm not, gonna, I'm not qualified to debate the science over climate change. What is your take on global warming or climate change? No, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a scientist. It's their favorite line. And when they do actually talk about scientists, they usually point to people like Dr. Willie Soon. He's the darling of the right wing climate denier caucus. He says greenhouse gases just aren't that bad for you. Senator Inhofe has repeatedly cited his work over the years. The same Senator Inhofe who once said this about climate change. The, the fact that all this is happening is due to man-made gases. I really believe it's the greatest hoax ever perpetrated on the American people. The greatest hoax ever perpetrated. And to back him up, he pointed to people like Dr. Soon. These are scientists that cannot be challenged. I'm not too sure about that, Senator. Because the New York Times reports Dr. Soon has accepted $1.2 million in funding from the fossil fuel industry, which he hasn't disclosed in most of his scientific papers. Interesting. A guy pushing back on climate change debate while getting paid by oil and gas companies. Well, I'm not a scientist, but I can sure spot a potential conflict of interest when I see one. So nice try. But don't even try to deny this one, because we got you. Yeah, he's a former manager for James Brown, if you guys know anything about Reverend Al Shopton. <laughs> oh, well, did I take $1.2 million right, right? Is that, is that true? Obviously, it's not. Since 1991, I started my postdoctoral fellowship at the prestigious institution of Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. All my funding over this time come from government sources and even corporate sources, obviously. And when you add up this amount over 10 to 15 years, right? And then first of all, you have to remember, the center take about 40% for overhead, so 60% of it comes to me, right? And then that's without, uh, actually before tax. So if you average that out, if you know some numbers, that's 40,000 to $75,000. I live in a poverty level in that sense. How is that a bribe, right? It's very strange. Anyway, am I working for the fossil fuel industry or even the oil company? It's a very strange accusation. Yes, the funding that I get from through the Center for Astrophysics comes from Southern Company and the Coke, Charles Koch Foundation. Southern Company is an electric utility company. They produce electricity from all sources, fossil fuel, nuclear, wind, solar, and so on. If you want to call them a fossil fuel industry, I think you should call them renewable industry. For the Coke Foundation, the Coke industry is a wide range portfolio. It produces stuff like uh, pollution control uh, equipment. It, it does all kinds of business, including the coated 
quilted northern, right? The tissue to wipe your behind. And uh, spandex, you know. If you want to call them fossil fuel industry, shouldn't you call them the fashion industry? Or you shouldn't call them a pollution control industry? It's a very weird kind of a misuse of language. But what do others do, right? The easiest way is to follow the narrative. If I wanted to do research on, shall we say, the squirrels of Sussex, what I would do, and this is any time from 1990 onwards, I would write my grant application saying, I want to investigate the nut gathering behavior of squirrels with special reference to the effects of global warming. And that way I get my money. If I forget to mention global warming, I might not get the money. It's really true. If you think that this is actually just a cartoon, it's a real situation. I mean, myself and Professor Legay, who is actually a great climatologist from the of Delaware, we've been through this for some 30, 40 years. And he much longer than me. <laughs> in, in essence, from 1991 to about early 2000, actually all my fundings are from government funded or taxpayer funded, right? Air Force, NASA, NSF, so on and so forth. And then starting about early 2000, I realized that it's really hard to try to get grant unless you play along and, and, and speak the narrative. Okay? So I wrestled really, really hard with this. Right? Should I keep my soul, right? Or should I just follow the narrative? You know? And that sort of thing. Obviously, I chose my soul in that end. Right? So it's really hard to look for funding. So well, let me go here first. It's really hard because over this year, you can see it's 40000 to seven. Uh, $75,000 a year is hardly, hardly sufficient in that sense. But I, I'm very happy because I chose science. I want to study science, right? This is, of course, the famous, uh, what you call, Willie Donald McDuck, right? Swimming in a huge pool of money. Well, let's move on to point number two. The point number two is that I fail to disclose. I have this conflict of interest. It's a very clear that all my funding, clearly Willy Soon cannot just go out there and get money. Not so easy. You work at a fine institution, you have to go through the Office of Contract and Grants, and then for my case, it has to go directly to the director's office, which he watched me very carefully, believe me. And they kept this 40%, and then I receive a regular paycheck. So I don't know how is it that it's me who received the money. Actually, it's the Center for Astrophysics that's taking the money, isn't it, right? And then every time I write a paper, what do I do? Willy Soon from Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. This is full declaration, period. There's no cheating or anything about I'm not afraid of all these things. What are they talking about? Well, this welcome to the first Twilight Zone for tonight. This is actually a case that is very quite famous. Some 20 climatologists writing to President Obama asking President Obama to invoke the so-called RICO law. So we call them RICO 20 which is this racketeering law, right? Trying to put all of us in jail because we don't follow the narrative. So the leader here is Professor Jagdish Shukla from George Mason University. And you look at this. For me, I only want to ask a simple question. Okay, you want to put us in jail, you say that I, I violated all this conflict of interest law. Maybe we ask ourselves about Professor Shukla. Here's a Fox News uh, reporter who actually produced some journalism Asking the question, did he actually not declare a lot of his business, right? In addition to that, actually, he re received a regular paycheck of 250k from George Mason University. But from his uh, NSF grant, he received an additional $330,000. Even his wife received $166,000 a year from this institute that he created at George Mason. And then his funding is extensive. It's $29 million, okay? from the grant that he was a principal investigator, and then additional some, uh, I think, 12 millions or so from his institute. I mean, we're talking a guy really, really not declaring his conflict of interest to promote that CO2 must cause global warming.